Right guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Baz. And today we're gonna to go back up to Jackson's to take another look at that bearing. Uh, Dave's run me last night and he is uh, very concerned if that bearing fails. So today is Friday, it is the day after the last chapter. Right, now then that bearing is a lot more expensive than we thought. So uh, we're gonna go and take the cap off in a minute just to see what has actually failed with inside the bearing housing. If something has failed and it's major, then we're going to do it this weekend, right? This Sunday. So today is Friday. These chapters are continuously rolling on, yeah, so you can see the story as it goes along. Um, so we've got Callan on with another bucket here. This is just a little 13 ton ditcher bucket that he's put a new bottom in and he's going to put a new turnable edge on. All right. Straightforward, in and out. When we do buckets for ourselves to go back into our own higher fleet, yeah, we only use mild steel, right? Because it's got a mild steel 10 mil floor in it. And it's got mild steel 15 mil flat bars on it. Now then, if we're doing it for a customer, we only do buckets to the what the customer requires. So if they're not very often we're doing for other people, I'll be honest with you, because we're busy enough doing our own buckets. You know, we've got we've got way over 500 buckets that we've got to look after ourselves, and it's a full time job for two men really, just doing our own buckets. So yeah, Callum's doing that, in and out, new edge on it. This is the uh, the spike thing that uh, Andy brought. Farm, farm. we're gonna put a, uh, a Q fit attachment on it for a telehandler. So we're just gonna weld some flat bars in there. We're gonna weld another flat bar on the front edge here. Yeah, and then we'll put the Q fit bracket on the outside. So it gets hold of this box section, we need to we need to get all of that box section there, it'll be a major weak point if we don't. Can you see like they've done here with the original hanger? Well, basically we're doing that there, in that position. So we've just opened the hangers up, yeah. So the lads are just getting a trailer in now. Um, we have got a BMI trailer that's just uh, going back on. Well, we're just off hire, should we say. We've had it on hire for two years, so uh, if we damage anything, like we damage the back door there, can you see they've got a hole in it? So that's the back door of the BMI trailer. Cal, just a little patch over that. All right. Just yeah. a little patch over that hole, yeah? Yeah, so. There's a Jackson's trailer in, it needs a centre strap. Put a new strap on that. So their priority over anything else, yeah? Get them out at wear first. I'm going to go back up to Jackson's, look at that bearing. Can you work Sunday or not? Possibly. I'll find it. I'll let you know. All right, I need to know it next hour. All right. Yeah, um, if this needs doing on Sunday, it's a has to be done job. Oh yeah. Right, so when these machines, and we have a problem with a machine, especially a wash plant like this, if you think about the tonnage that run through it per hour and the money that it's, it's gonna lose if it's down, yeah, then we have to jump. If it's, uh, even if we have to work all through the night to get it running, that's what we'll do. But this particular time, we could do it this Sunday. Yeah? yeah. Right. Right, director, let's have a, have a ride up there, take the cover off, and we'll make a decision there and then. Okay, so this is the Jackson's wagon that needs the strap on it. So if you look at that motor there, can you see how it's got two pulley system on it? Well, that bottom strap there, if we walk along the trailer director, should have another strap there going over the centre of the trailer. So if you look there, can you see where it's frayed and come away from it? So. The sheet is actually only being pulled over front and back where it needs to be pulled over from the centre as well. So they'll have to replace that strap with a two strap. Basically another strap attached to that one. And then tension it up on the pulley and it all pulls over at the same time. Dead easy to do. All you do is pull a bolt out on that pulley. Lift one of the bolts out that's fastened the strap, so I'll put a new strap in. Tie it to the pole at the other side. And, uh, and that'll be good to go. Let's get up here. Right, so we're at Jackson's now. We'll go up to the top and uh, whip this cover off this bearing housing. All right, so we're just going to take this cover off just to see what's actually going on inside here. Thank you. 
Right, so we're struggling getting the spanner on the on the nut on the back of this bolt. Right, because of this uh, frame here, when you put your spanner in, it's touching the housing, so you can't get it on. It's, it's touching that, if you will. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to cut that off. Cut this off, shall we say? To uh, we'll have to take these little Allen keys out. There's some little Allen keys there. Can you see that on there? On there. And then we can wind the bolt in there to pull this cover off. So, uh, worse than I expected to just get a cover off. So, what, how much are we talking, Dave? If, if this machine's down for a couple of hours, well, big money. Yeah, it's costing us over a couple, two, two and a half, three thousand pounds an hour. Been down? Just in loss of sales because we're tight on 10 mil. We're low on And, it, and it's going out as fast as it's coming off the belt. Exactly, yeah. yeah. The lads and the sales teams yeah. are selling it as fast as we yeah. can make it. Yeah. Which is what we want. Yeah. So downtime is a premium at the moment. So when it, when it comes to looking at parts and uh, downtime on machines, we've got to we've got to take into account how much uh, we'll lose in uh, in revenue from the material. Yeah. So yeah, it's going to be cheaper just changing the bearing, but it's sometimes cheaper just changing the whole thing to get it done quicker. In it. Peace of mind as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Braces, you're not going to be down again yeah. in a couple of weeks. But the price of that. Um, I am going to look at changing the bearing if we can. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just going to get some more spanners out of it, man. So that's a 16mm thread. Yeah. So a couple of 16mm bolts. So a 24mm head. In fact, these are the same bolts as we used on that screen box down in Wales. Oh, all good. Oh yeah, major, major, major. Right, director. So now this gives us a bit of a dilemma because this is a Friday morning. So the perfect time to do this would be this Sunday. So I'll get on to CDE now, or Dave should I say, and just see how quick that we can get this assembly here, because uh, <clears throat> we cannot be leaving it like that as you can see. The next thing you'll wear the shaft and then you're into a lot more money. You can see it now. <laughs> to be fair, I wouldn't, I would, they want to run it today, I wouldn't even recommend running it today, but uh, I'll have to let that Dave make that decision. Okay, so that cap is bolted onto the end of the shaft. If you look here, got three little bolts. Oh, that's actually coming out. Right, and then you've got a nut that's wound onto the shaft. See this nut here? This will wind off. And then we'll be able to get the inner race of the bearing off. Now, Dave, do you reckon? Do you reckon they'd sell that bearing? I don't reckon they will, will they? I don't reckon they'll sell the bearing in that altercation, will they, on their own? No. I can, uh, I can make a phone call now. Yeah, if you can make a phone call now, because what I'm thinking, Dave, if you look at this, yeah, I reckon this will come out. Yeah. This is one. If we, if we put a beam across the box, chain block it up, take the weight of the shaft, take this nut off, pull the inner race off, slide a new bearing on, put a new cover on. Job yeah. done. I'm saying it sounds easy like that, yeah, but you might not be able to get them bits like that. Or if you buy the full assembly, we'll have to take them bits out. Right, I'll just get Nathan But it's not worth paying all that money for the I'll full get assembly. Now on FaceTime. Yeah. Show him what we're thinking if you can talk to him. Yeah. Right. 
talking through yeah, it yeah. and then we'll see what yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good idea. So he's going to bring the supplier up at CD and I'll talk to him on for. So if we just take a look in the box, director, I'll stay make a call. Look at the size of the box. Now the, the shaft, that goes from one end to the other. So you can imagine how much weight's in that shaft. Okay, so this is the full assembly. Now then, my only worry is where it's brought, so we've just took that cap off the end there and the shaft has dropped, hasn't it? Because the ball bearings have dropped out. So I was thinking we could just replace the bearing within this housing, which may still be possible yet. Yeah? But Dave did order this full thing yesterday and it has actually just landed on site. So, We'll get it down here next at wash plant. We'll get my own eyes on it so I can see what's going on at back end here. So if there's some seals in that back side there, um, and they're all damaged, which they probably will be if that's dropped. Yeah, we better just take it and unbolt in it here. Get hold of the shaft. Like I said, we'll put a beam down and uh, put a beam there and get a chain block around it. Uh, take the weight, unbolt it. Unbolt it here where it bolts to the frame of the machine then pull that whole thing out but that weighs 250 kilos just that alone so that's telling me we're probably going to need a telehandler or uh, if we can't get an excavator to reach it we'll have to get a telehandler up to lift it up there because it's just too heavy to uh, manhandle up there that so we're going to get the uh, this full assembly down here now i'll have a look at it if it's if it does look like it's damaged something from behind then they could run it today and we'll do it another day and we do it now I'm pretty sure Dave will want us to attack it now so let's go and see him right so the plan is now we're going to get Dave's machine down here see if it'll actually reach up here to get hold of this shaft I bet there's about 5 tonne in that we're not 100% sure but I'll uh, I'll give uh, I'll give an air a ring he'll know won't he let's see how much weight's in that Um. And if the machine won't lift it to hold it for us to take the bearing off the end because what we're going to do we're going to replace the full assembly now we're not going to bother messing about because there's uh, seals and stuff at the back end that are damaged so we might as well take the whole lot out whilst it's here and, uh, and replace it but this is going to be an episode on its own this we're going to do it on sunday the lads have got a lot of work to do on the machine aren't you dave so um we'll do this this sunday as an, a separate episode yeah Right, director. We don't need to touch that now. We'll go and uh, have a look at the new assembly up at the uh, up at the workshop. Okay, so there are the bolts that we've just taken out to take this cover plate off. So we've took that ring of bolts out, haven't we? Now then, if you look at the back side of this now, this weighs 250 kilos. That shaft has actually dropped about 40 mil, so all this housing will be damaged, no doubt about it. So it's a good job Dave's <laughs> got this, because we would have had uh, big issues if won't we? we took it apart and, and didn't have that back end. That's a thing. Yeah, yeah. So what we're doing now, we're just sourcing some new bolts because all the bolts are rounded off at the other end. So we're going to put all new bolts in this stub end. And uh, so basically the hardest part about this job is getting that up there and into position, holding the shaft up. It's just all heavy lifting, do you know what I mean? So we're going to need some chain blocks. If the telehandle will reach up there, it might not reach that, eh? I think we'll use the Volvo 380. Use Volvo 380 to get that up. And even hold the shaft up with that. Yeah. Yeah. So if you let me know if that reach, if it doesn't reach, we'll put yeah, a beamer. We've got to go and take the lids off this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. To prep up ready for Sunday. Yeah. So get it all we'll cleaned go. out, ready to go. We'll yeah. Close the today. So we'll we'll leave this one that director, and we'll, this will be episode 15 out. So look out for that one. Hey, watch this. Hey, 
Oh, Tom. A bit worn out, that. Tom, it's, uh, is it fairly new? Uh, last year. Last year? <laughs> I'll, I'll, hey, I'll look after it, mate. You don't have a hard time for me. I'm going to, uh, <laughs> have a few scratches on it. Oh, it comes hey. back to the head, Tom. Huh? It'll be all right. I won't worry too. It's all so we're going to pick these para harrows up. Is that what they're called, Tom? What, the rollers? Yeah, they call, is that what they call para harrows? Yeah. Over in Doncaster, so I'm borrowing Tom's trailer. <laughs> Little farm, aren't you, Tom? That's right. Loves his, loves his farming. Yeah, we'll check all the lights are on. Yeah, go on. Check the lights. Hey. Great light. Yeah, it's great that. Great sound. It's a good, it's a good one, isn't it? That? Yeah, it's a good one. How long is it, Tom? 16. 16 foot. Great right, sound. Put it slot in. Oh, it might be. You might have to put some zip ties on it. But... What do you mean, zip ties? Oh, I don't know. Are you having a laugh? There's me thinking you bought a proper trailer. Yeah, you did. Alright, yeah, we'll have to put some zip ties around that. Right. <laughs> right, so we borrowed the trailer off Tom because we're going to pick the para harrows up if that's what they're called. Like I say, I know nothing about farm machinery. But I know a lot of farmers follow me. And uh, <laughs> We're probably screaming at me sometimes when I talk about farm stuff, but I don't really know much about this. But the lad who works for me, Luke, he knows a lot about farm machinery. So once we've picked them up and got them back here, um, he can come in tomorrow, which will be Saturday, to uh, try and fit them. But we might even need to shorten them yet. I'm not too sure. But yeah, let's get over to Doncaster and get picked up. It's a company called AJW Machinery, I think they're called. And... Um, Loads of people message me saying you need to go to these guys, so that's where we're going. Alright, so here we are at AJW Farm Machinery for the para harrows. So it looks like uh, they sell all kinds of bits for this farming tackle that we need. A few tractors in there, look. I don't think they'll be for sale, director. Well, anyway, look, it looks like we need a couple of these brackets as well. I'd say. Yeah, we'll definitely need a couple of them. For the harrows, if we have a look over here. That's one that we bought there. Don't want to dab his Tom's trailer, do we?
Right, so here we are all loaded up now. They've actually given us these for free, very kindly of them, because uh, they think we might need these at the other end when we come to fit these pack of rollers, because these rollers are uh, 100mm longer than what we actually need. So it's either extend the frame at the other end or cut these down. Um, I don't know which one we're going to do yet, but we'll sort it over the next couple of days, one way or the other. So here's Liam, lad who's just loaded us. Just tell us a little bit about what you do here, Liam. Uh, basically, we buy the Coon power, power Harrors. Uh, we do like them broken, really, so we can uh, break them down and strip them for parts, but we do we do buy them fully, fully working. So that's what you deal with these all the time? Yeah, mainly I know nothing about these, that's why you said I needed <laughs> them bits, you right, know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah it's mainly Coon, but... We do uh, we do tend tend to look at a bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Bit of all sorts. Yeah. So yeah, I'll put a link in the description to these guys, yeah, because we've helped us out a little bit here. Yeah? And it was somebody on uh, on social who, who pointed these guys out to me from their Facebook page. So whoever that was, cheers for that. All right, director, we'll get back. Right, thank you. Right, so we've just landed back in the yard. We're just about to uh, pull this into the, the workshop itself. So let's just find a good place to hook it up. Cal? Um, just probably just try it on here, just on one link. See if it picks up. All right, come closer, Tom. How much weight do you reckon is in that, Tom? Keep it close to it, keep it close. Uh, keep it low to the ground then, just try it. I don't know how it'll pick up this, we'll just see it. Tom, I'll tell you what. Uh, yeah, go on, try it. I was thinking of putting two chains on it, but go on, come it, keep it straight. Easy work, easy work. What are you worried about? Spin it round, Tom, spin it round. Oh, don't get any higher than that. Right, Cal, we need, that, that'll have to come out at workshop, that. We're going to be out of room. Yeah. So the plan is, it's Friday night now, by the way, so I'm going to get Luke in tomorrow to uh, to crack on with this because he's more into the farming tackle and um, obviously we're going to uh, go and do that job on Sunday so I just basically want to get this in the workshop for him uh, so he's got the crane to use Well Tom, you alright? He's taking that out? Yeah just get a few bits out at workshop director. I'll wait for a minute. Right, go on, Tom, lad. In fact, director, you might as well get yourself off now. And I'll uh, we'll carry this chapter on next week. But we will be filming uh, a Sunday episode. Swing it round, Tom. Sleuch it right now. We will be uh, filming a Sunday episode for you guys. So look out for that one, director. I'll see you at 6 o'clock Sunday morning, yeah? So here we got the para harrows done, all buttoned up. We're just waiting on uh, one of these box actual legs to come in here to adjust from this side. It's missing from this side. Just waiting for that to come off uh, off the off the supplier. I'm not sure where we're getting it from. Actually, Charlie's. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd. Uh, there's a little bit of a skip here <laughs> in the chapter because um, I've been ill. And the director's ill and he's still ill now but he's just coming just to get a bit of footage of this before it actually goes back to site where it's come from but it actually turned out all right but all we had to do really is put spacers in here as you can see 
to get that roller in. Now then for some reason, Luke, was that 30 mil bigger than other or something? Yeah, so what, this, this one was actually 30 mil bigger than that one. I'm not sure quite why. But look at all the work that we saved there by uh, buying them at really good money like. You know, so Luke's done all this work. Good lad, Luke. Or should I say, Esab Luke? Esab Luke. Luke. Oh yeah, he done a good job there, lad. Yeah. It, uh, it, saved, it saved me a bit of headache anyway, you know what I mean? As you can see, I'm absolutely full of flu. Uh, so I apologise for that. Um, but yeah, I just thought we'd show you that just before it goes back to the farm. Director, should we uh, should we show that over there or not? No? Something new's turned up in the yard. Yeah? Which we'll, uh, we'll probably show you next week. Are you going to come in in the morning? Yeah? Right. So, normal business resumes at 6 a.m. No? <laughs> 8 o'clock, you see. 8 o'clock then. All right, Luke. All right, guys. So, we're back. I've had a few days off. Had a bit of a bit of an illness there. Uh, so did the director and so did a few other lads here. But um, yeah, it's one of them where you try and work through it, where you think you're invincible and you can work through it. But this one, you just couldn't work through it. I'm still not right now. I'm 50% better, but um, we're good to go. So uh, this chapter is a little bit of a few gaps in it, should we say. But uh, the bearing uh, on the log wash that was at the start of this chapter has been done. We did film that on a Sunday. If you look up here now, if you're watching on a PC, that's the link to it. Other than that, it'll be in the description below. Um, today, we're going to uh, go and inspect a J45 that apparently has got a tail drum bearing that's uh, blown on it over in Liverpool. Uh, we've got a top roller block uh, that needs uh, sorting out on a, a CX210 over in Shaw, Manchester Way. Uh, but this bug... Um, now then, you know that you can work through bugs, don't you? I'm always like, oh, get your cell in when you're ill, you know, but there was no working through this, mate. I'm telling you, I had to get the director on the phone. I rung him to come round to mine and I was basically <laughs> shivering and he's like, you need to get some vitamins in you. So, like a good brother does, he went and got me some, uh, some good vitamins and uh, some medicine that I needed to try and recover. Anyway, I was off work for three days. That's how bad it was. So, yeah. Today's another day, like a week ahead, shall we say. So this chapter, I don't know when the director's going to put this chapter out, but uh, uh, we like to keep it uh, running in line, if you will. So just to let the viewers know that's what's actually happened. All right, so now we're going to head over to uh, Liverpool. Me and Callum are going out today on the road and, um, and we'll take a look at this 45. So here we are at Liverpool, our Newton Road depot. This used to be the old tarmac depot. Uh, Foxy took it over last year at some point. So here we got a J45. A fairly new machine. This is a 2023 machine. Uh, so we will do a full inspection on it whilst we're here today. But um, there is a tail drum bearing gone on it. Which I will show you shortly. What we'll do, we'll lift it up on the jack legs put the pins in and uh, get underneath and take a closer look but the first thing I'm going to look at is if it's been getting grease now there's no way on this earth should we be changing the tail drum bearing on a 2023 machine alright so I'll tell straight away now all we need to do is lift the conveyor up and look for the grease points and see if there's any grease on them
have a word with Tony here minute, he's been looking after the machine. Now then, Tony is a really good lad. But, if he hasn't been shown where the grease points are, then it falls back onto uh, us. Because uh, when people get a J45, all they see is them. And they think, oh, that's it, that's all we need to grease up. Or no, they're just your jaw bearings. All right. Now then, your, your other bearings, your conveyor bearings are in a se separate spot, which are here. Behind this. Right, and as you can see, there's no way in hell, because they don't know they're there, that's the thing. Yeah, so I'm just hoping now, people that are watching, it work for us. If you get them a Clusky 45 or a 40, these are your grease points. These two are for your tail drum bearings, these two are for your head drum bearings. Alright? Now then, they only need greasing every 40 hours. As you can see there, 40 hours. But like I say, once a week. So, I don't know how long this machine's been on the higher here. But I will find out. But just looking at that, you can tell all rocket scientists tells you that they're not been getting any grease. So I'll have a word with Tony in a minute. I'll put it on camera for you guys to see. And I'm just going to say to him, Tony, show me how you uh, grease this machine up and see what he says. All right, so this is Tony. You, pr you pretty much do uh, most of the work here, don't you? Try to, yeah, yeah, hi. Try to, yeah. so he's a good lad, yeah. Um, so you just tell me now how to grease this machine and show me how to grease it. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, we've got, got a couple of points here. Yeah. Go around and grease these couple of points here. Yeah. We've got the mag belt. Yeah. We've got two, two points on the mag belt on each side. Yeah. Go you know about them ones. Walk around the machine. These, these are your main ones. Obviously, do, on, do, yeah. the, do these every day, ideally. Yeah. Got the same again on this side. Yeah. Got two, two points here. And on both sides of this belt here. Yeah. Got the uh, got the grease nipples here. I, I was. So how, I got how, told, are you, how are you greasing the main conveyor? This I got told that on the on the bottom bearing, underneath on the right hand side, there's a grease nipple there. But it well, is a bit. What, it is a bit about, of. What about the head drum? It, it, I've never been sure that one, right. Baz. Never been right. sure that one. This is where we're going wrong here now. I'll yeah. show you something now. Yeah. Right. If you lift the conveyor up. We're on the conveyor all the way up. Always remember, on each conveyor, yeah. you're going to have four grease points. Okay. Right. You should never need to climb underneath the I machine. Know, I knew something wasn't right, right with never. that. I knew something was right. Have a look down here. Yeah. So have you, bone dry. So have you ever put grease there? No. no never. No, and how no, long's this machine been on here? Say six months. Even before I was sort of looking after these, they've never been touched them. They've never been touched? Never ever been touched. I've never ever been shown them. Right, so you've never been shown them. No. So it's not your fault because you've never been shown them, that's it, the problem. It is never Do you know what I mean? Okay. So, no, it's not your fault. Yeah. Yeah? So, people will see this now and yeah. think... Aye. I've never been shown them ones. It was all, the ones I've just shown you, the only ones I've been shown. Yeah, them, yeah. Right, so we need to put more procedures in place within the company. Yeah, yeah. Whenever a machine goes out on hire, especially to our guys yeah. who work yeah, for yeah, us, yeah, yeah. we need to know. Yeah, like, it's exactly. a brand new machine with a tail, yeah, with a bearing on. Yeah, yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, not only that, all the other bearings have had no grease. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so what we'll do now, we'll lift it up on the jack legs at the back. We'll drop the tail, the, uh, yeah, tail yeah. drum down, and uh, we'll have to pull the belt across, pull the tail drum back, take the bearing off, and put a new so, bearing on. All right. Hammered, well, there are your points now. So once a week. Yeah. Put about four or five pumps in it. I've got plenty. You say I've got a few, didn't I? So. You know what I mean? So. I didn't think anything. you'd know. But nah, obviously, I'm not trying to make you look bad on camera. No, I just want people to know. Nah, do you know what I mean? It is what it is. Yeah. Say, yeah. Say no one. They, 
in there the only ones I've ever been shown to do like yeah, but obviously I get it all the time mate big problem all the time you I know we got we got a lot of crushes about us now so yeah. we need to we need to let people realise this been keeping on top of this one but I've made try to it's greased up in our book obviously didn't know there there. any other issues with it none at all no nah. none none at all so have you, have you has known? the uh, jaw ever been checked for being no, tight. No. 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 Nah, so never been That's checked. another one that needs checking once a week. Right. Okay. Right. So if you see that one, if you see these knots here. Yeah. When it's crushing. Yes. If you see any movement in them at all. Right. You'll just see them like moving just slightly. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? If they're moving just slightly, they just need talking up a little Sound bit. Mate. No so what, what I mean by talking up is getting a spanner. Yeah. And if you ain't got a spanner, then you need, we need to come yeah, out I've for got, it. I've got them in and the just as, as, as tight as you can get them with your foot yeah, off spanner. No worries. You know. Just nip them up, yeah. Just nip them up, yeah. So. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'll get my all wheels on, we'll get cracking on. All right, director, so what we're going to do here now, we're going to drop the rear tail gun down here. We're going to pull that lever and drop down at the back end. So that's as long as it'll go. Now we're going to lift the jack legs, drop the jack legs to lift the back end of the machine up. Now then, director, if you go around that side, another thing to look for on these machines is when they're crushing a lot on quarries. You see how it builds up with inside the chassis, down there, and at this side. If you get some hard material in there and lift the belt up, well, we've got a big ripping belt here. That's an issue. What can happen there? You get, if you get if you on uh, demolition, you got the steel going in there. It'll just rip that belt clean off. The mag belt will pull it up to that pulls off the mag belt here. But what I'm trying to say is, if material builds up within the chassis, and you lift the belt up on these rams, these rams alone can twist the conveyor. So all that, I'd say every week, every couple of weeks, uh, lower the belt. Switch the machine off, isolate it, climb inside and clean all the chassis frame out and then lift the belt back up. So we'll shut the machine down now, isolate it, go and go and have a look at the bearing. So we'll just isolate it. There's only me and Callum and Tony on site so there's, there's no issues. But on some sites if you're working on your own, see how it's got a little hole there within the isolator? That's to put a padlock. So nobody can come along and uh, fire the machine whilst anybody's working, especially inside the jaw box. All right, so let's take a look underneath. Torch, Cal. Okay, well, that, that bearing's managed to survive. So as you can see, the belt is way over to that side. Check the bearing at this side. Oh yes, she's well gone. So what we want to do, I'm just going to put a, a chain block on there. 
onto the belt here try and pull the belt across this way just to give us a bit of room to get into this bearing pull the tail drum back probably have to release the belt slightly but uh, let's just see if it'll move without releasing the belt now then because the belt has come over so far you can, as you can see up there where it's, it's actually touching the frame there's no grease line on this bearing so at some point the grease line has been pulled off it so even if they were to be greasing it it won't be getting any grease so that, uh, that's another problem that we'll have to sort all through today and also I've just noticed this is here this plate should not be bent like that so that is, that's all bent there, we'll take that off in a bit and show you a closer look at that, but that shouldn't be like that, that should be down here that's like a little guard if you will so uh, Cal, get a couple of uh, chain blocks out and let's, uh, let's start with pulling the belt over Get, uh, get the jack out, Ollie. Get the 20 ton air jack out, put the compressor on. It doesn't start moving. I'll have to slacken the belt. It's very really tight there at the moment. Okay, so that little chain box is pretty tight there, so we will have to slacken the belt. We're actually quite lucky that we've, uh, we've not damaged the shaft there. It's that far gone. Alright, so Callum's just going to slacken the belt off. Before we slacken the belt off, we always take a measurement from there to there. So we're under 85mm there. Yeah, and when we'll, we'll take it back out to that once we've got the new bearing on. And then we'll set the belt right up in the air and uh, see if it's centralised. That's yeah, going on it. Can always slacken the belt off slightly. We'll get the, uh, the belt well over this way. And then we'll get another chain block on to pull the uh, tail drum back. We can actually just release this chain block now. Now we've got the belt pulled by over. All I'm doing here is uh, just checking the weight of the tail drum before we pull it back and then we'll release the bolt on the housing. There we go. Okay, you can take the light out. So we've got it hooked up to the chassis there at the back and uh, try to take the weight of the drum. You see the drum moving back slowly there now. Yeah. That's an easy get, yeah. Come on, Cal. Hold it there. Cal? Yeah. Back up, 
the arm there. Uh, yeah, dredge all that. Very lucky to uh, not have gone through the inner race and worn the shaft. Maybe it's a lot more expense, but we've started to wear into the, the main frame of the machine itself. There, can you see? So that housing there, we'll take these little grub screws out. In fact, I'm just going to gas that off. Make it easier. First of all, I'm going to wear my fingers up because they're frozen to board. Done. Alright, so we're just going to uh, put the inner race off now. Then the Harry's cut. Okay, so that's the inner race off. You can see how I blew into the uh, to the race, but didn't actually touch the shaft. You see how there's no damage to the shaft. Nice and easy. Just blow with the gun, nice and steady. That just knocked off nice and easy with your bar coming off that way. All right, so we'll just clean the shaft up now with a bit of emery cloth, wherever that is. Got a bit of memory cough, so we'll just put around the shaft. We'll clean up before we put the new bearing on. Leave that uh, torch back. I love doing this kind of work on. Uh, on crushes and stuff, uh, it's just not particularly nice when it's raining and at the moment, this last few months, we've had constant rain, haven't we? Constant rain. Yeah. Alright, so the new bearing, uh, as you can see, they have two points where you can put a grease nipple or a grease line. That is so you can put the bearing either way. Or you can either take the bearing out the insert and turn it around. But because there's no grease line on the machine, the belt's worn through the grease line. What we're going to do, we're just going to put two grease nipples in it for now. And uh, we'll fire a little bit of grease in it now before we put it on. And the machine is actually coming off higher uh, next week. So like I say, they can go for a week with uh, 40 hours basically, we just uh, 
recently these, firing that fire a bit into that cow. Uh, when this comes back into the yard, we'll just take the bleat number and uh, put a new grease line on it when it goes back into the yard. So we're just pumping some grease into it now. You've got to be careful not to put too much in it because you'll blow this seal off. Only there, cow. It'll be going in nicely that anyway. Go on. These are called the G coupler. Really good grease end if you're looking for a new grease end. So we'll just see if Cal uh, can slide that bearing back on the shaft and now I'll, uh, I'll just have a coffee. We're just changing the position now that, uh, of how we're pulling the, the tail drum. We're pulling it up before, now we need to like, pull it back and down a bit if we, if we come for too far down it's easy to, easier for us to put the jack underneath and lift it up. Yeah, you have to it again. We'll come down now. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Just pull it, pull it, pull it fair back, Cal, don't matter, just get slide the bearing on as it is, yeah? And then we'll jack it up. that's very preventable this uh, if the right training's in place for the operators which I will I will make a bit of noise and make it happen Come back, Al, yeah? a bit more Just release the uh, release it a little bit, Cal. Oh, There's another, uh, there's another M16 knot with you. Pull them threads off and uh, another washer. Uh, so that's all lined up now. Just tighten the little grub screws up uh, in the uh, in the inner. Just got another bolt to put in the top there. We'll tighten that up. We'll release the chain block. And then we'll take this guard off that's all bent uh, above the uh, tail drum here. 
Yeah, I'm gonna check, I'm gonna keep that guard off because I have nothing but issues with them to be fair. Okay, so we're taking this guard off here. Can you see this guard's all bent over? As you'll see in a minute, there's also a loose pipe here on this uh, tail ram. So we'll just take these four bolts out as we're doing here at gun now and uh, take a closer look at this. Got Callum inside on the spanner. Right, so as you can see here, director. See how that's completely folded back on itself. That's at risk of uh, damaging the belt. See how sharp it is there. So what we're going to do, we're going to take that back to the workshop with us. We'll remake that. It should be on about, I don't know, say 45 degrees or something like that. But it's actually completely bent right around, so it's uh, pointless leaving it on like that. Uh, <coughs> if you look at the back of the uh, this little chute here, it comes down here and down here over the belt. So it does need it on. Well, they've only got like a day's crushing left here before it uh, actually comes back to the workshop. Tie this little pipe up now, and uh, and yeah, we'll sort the grease lines out on this plate when it gets back to the workshop. If you look there, you can see where the belt's been rubbing into the frame here. So it's worn that away. So yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed with it being a fairly new machine, but these things happen and uh, hopefully other people will learn from it. Yeah, that looks good. Cal has put it back to the position where it was when we first came here. So can you see how it's central in the head drum there? Now then the belt has got a nasty, uh, nasty gash in it. So again, what I'll do when it comes back to the shop, we'll put a patch in the belt. Is it okay at back end, Cal, yeah? Right, that sound, that. Right, let's clean up tools, wrap up. Get on to the next job. Right, so we've just arrived at Arvin's at uh, Horwich. My little father, as I like to say. Um, so this is a, a little block that goes onto the track frame that bolts the top roller on. Now then, this is actually off a CX250, so that's a case 25 tonner um, that one of my lads went to last week. And what had happened was the, uh, the bolts had snapped halfway in and ripped the threads out at the top end. So what Arvin's actually done is actually um, put a threaded sleeve in there, can you see? extracted the bolt out of there and re-threaded re it all the way down and put a sleeve in there so I mean what I could have done there is basically filled them up with wells and re-drilled it and re-tapped it but my pillar drills down so we've got the main one on it here didn't we yeah. you're not getting camera shy are we no not, getting, not really you're not getting camera shy <laughs> down father you know dazzling me so what, what size have you gone up to on that? That's M27 to M20. Yeah. So you've got full insert. It's not like helicoil. No. It's, it's just, just like a threaded sleeve. It's threaded sleeve, so yeah. it can't come out. I put lock tight. Yeah. It's not yeah. going to come out. And it's... See, I was just buying a new block. You know what I mean? Not much work into that, is it? You know. Um, like I say, this man can do anything. So, And he helps me out. Mm. All the time, don't you? <laughs> Try. At the drop of a hat. Try. Yeah. <laughs> People go on sick. Dave. You do the job, but you can't come back. That's, come on that's it. That's it. Day and breed. Day ah. and breed. You know what I mean? There's not many shops about like no. this anymore. And, uh, you know, if, if anybody uh, does want to get in contact with Arvin, he's in, he's in Horwich, Loco Works, what's left of it. Not mm. much left of it now, is there? That's it. They Clearing the slate across the road yeah, yeah. on the building. So and this will be the last building standing, and this is <laughs> this will be your retirement, won't it? When you sell this, eh? we'll try. So we was going to go over to Shaw now, which is the other side of Manchester, to weld this back, weld this on. But I've just had a call to say the machine's coming back to the yard. They've off-hired it and hired a 210. So 
um, which is good for us because it can get washed off back at yard and we'll weld it on back at yard. So we'll uh, we'll get back to the shop, eh? Cheers, Mary Father. Yep. <laughs> hey. What? What are we saying? All right, so we've just landed back at workshop. Uh, the machine is actually on its way back from Oldham on a low loader for this, so we'll bang that on shortly. But this is the uh, this is the stub end that we took out of the log wash. Um, and I don't know where we're up to, director, with the uh, this episode's already been out, hasn't it? So if you remember, we bought the uh, the stub end with all the bearing assembly and everything on it. But we can use this piece again. All we need to do is slide a bearing on it. And probably buy a couple of new uh, protector plates. That's a bit, bit worn and damaged. And yeah, we'll save a good lump of money there by using that. So if the uh, if the one next to it was to go, we could have this pre-built up ready to, to fit. So I'll, uh, I'll speak to Dave and see if he wants to order a bearing for that. All right. So we'll just wait for that machine to get back direct so we know we'll go back on. Just a touch. 19 mil on the grease valve. We'll see the track drop in a second. And then that track guard looks well worn. Probably uh Getting close for a set of chains this. Let's check all the bottom rollers. Right, so now we've got a couple of sleepers in between the chain there. We'll clean the uh, track frame off. That wants to be set uh, 25 mil back from there. Around there, should be fine. Put a tack on it. Okay, so we're going to use a 4 mil 7018 low hydrogen Lincoln electrode. The earth's on the track frame, yeah? So if you weld into the track frame, put the earth on the track frame. Don't put the earth to the track pad or anything like that. And because it's wet, we're isolating the machine anyway. Have you isolated it, Cal, yeah? Yeah, it's off, yeah. Yeah, so I'll just get the four tacks on this now. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put a little, just a little stitch at the back and then we'll weld the front, yeah? If you wasn't to put any anything on the back, it, if them tacks were weak, should we say, at the back side there, you put a weld on there, 
and they crack them tacks and it'll pull it this way. It'll always pull towards where the heat is. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to put three passes on. So we're going to put one there, one underneath. Right, so we've got the first pass in. We've just ground back, took all the uh, all the slag away. And we're going to put another run in the bottom there, and then we'll put another run over the top. Go. <coughs> right guys, I think we'll call it on this one. Bit of a mixed bag because there's been a few gaps in between because I had a few uh, health issues, should we say. And I ain't feeling the best right now. But uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed it all there, nevertheless. And uh, please like, subscribe and share like I always say. And we'll catch you on the next one. Check out my other episodes.